So much has been discussed and uh, even documents released, uh, papers written, books written as a matter of fact, on how to get Africa out of the poverty circle. And uh, someone has actually been looking at that very closely. And he joins us on Sunrise Daily this morning to help us understand where we are at, what we must do, and how we can forge ahead in trying to get uh, Nigeria, especially, and indeed Africa, out of poverty. So Roman Osegale is a business survey analyst. I want to thank you so much indeed for thank joining you. us thank on Sunrise Daily this morning. You have been particularly carrying out studies that has made some damning revelations about how we have been caught up in the poverty trap. Could you tell us more <clears> about that? Um, thank you very much for uh, inviting me over. Um, I started this quest um, more than five years ago because um, I was particularly concerned uh, to actually look for answers, not just for Nigeria, but for Africa as a whole. But um, over time, I kept on narrowing my search to what we were doing wrong as a nation, right? And um, if you look at our growth, it's not inclusive. And when I say it's not inclusive, I mean it does not reflect on the lives of the average Nigerian. And um, if you look at data, you look at figures, right? You find that, that we, we have this um, growth that uh, the GDP is growing, as it has grown over the years, but poverty is also growing with it then that means something is wrong. So I started mining data and going back to right from 1960 to see what we're doing wrong. And um, I, for one, I've always been an advocate of uh, human capital development for economic growth. And it was amazing what I've been discovering over the years and, um, and um, talking about. Uh, the issue <clears throat> which we're going to be looking at, right, it's basically why do we have economic growth, and at the same time, we have poverty increasing in Nigeria. Whereas, if you look at some other African countries that are even landlocked, right, they are reducing poverty. And, and uh, Nigeria is increasing poverty. So I, I, I look at the data, and I look at um, a website like the po uh, um, World Poverty Clock, right? And I studied it over time, and I found out that, on average, 8,000 people have been added to extreme, not just poverty, extreme poverty in Nigeria every day. Extreme poverty is when you live on less than $1.25 a day. And poverty is when you live on less than $1.90 a day, right? So what are we doing wrong? We're going to find out today. So uh, in, in, you have come up with a couple of uh, illustrations yes. that we saw. And uh, we've seen one in... Uh, Deep red, we've seen one in the, uh, uh, um, yellow, okay, and yes. also another one in green, and that suggests the countries with extreme poverty, and Nigeria is in the red, I'll, and I'll as you've just, just I'll, mentioned. I'll, I'll explain the map, right? Now, what you have here are four colors, right? You have the white countries, the, the countries in white, the countries in green, the countries in brownish yellow, and the countries in red. Now, the, the countries in white have extreme poverty as minute as 0.3% of population. Now, the countries in green are reducing extreme poverty. But the good thing about them is that they are going to meet the SDGs, that's the Sustainability Development Goals, right, which uh, the 193 member countries of the UN signed, uh, <clears throat> that by 2030, extreme poverty should be eradicated in the world, right? And these, these countries are are uh, reducing extreme poverty at a rate which they will meet that goal by 2030. Now, the next one is the brownish yellow. The brownish yellows are countries that are reducing extreme poverty. Both will not meet the 2030 um, sustainability development goals, right, the target. Now, what that means is this. For instance, uh, they tell you from here to Benin, right, is uh, if you drive at 100 kilometers per hour, you will cover that distance in three hours. But you have a car that can only do 65 kilometers per hour. You will get to Benin, right? But you might not get to Benin in three hours. 
You understand? So that's what the, the, the brownish uh, yellow countries, they will, they will eradicate extreme poverty, but they will not eradicate it by 2030, which is the deadline. Now, the countries in red are not eradicating. They are not reducing. They are on reverse gear. You understand? For instance, you are supposed to be going to Benin, but you put your car on reverse, and you are going towards a battle. So you are adding to the distance. So every day, Nigeria adds a, an average of about 8,000 people to extreme poverty. Is that by job losses or how? how they is are that not by job losses. Now, let's go, let's go to the next slide. Okay. I, I, I'll explain how we got ourselves um, uh, in this what is called the poverty trap. Hmm. Now, what is the poverty trap? I want to, I want to define it for you so that... Um, now, the poverty trap is a mechanism which makes it very difficult for people to escape poverty. A poverty trap is created when an economic system requires a significant amount of various forms of capital in order to aim enough to escape poverty. When individuals lack this capital, they may also find it difficult to acquire it, creating a self-reinforcing circle of poverty. Now, how did we get here, right? Mm. We got here by not investing in human capital development. Because I can see from the previous slide that uh, <laughs> all around Nigeria is the uh, yellow color. Good. And Nigeria is red. Good. And Nigeria, it seems to be one of the richest countries, or should I say within that region, West African well, region, well, well, the richest country. So how is it that what you have said translates to we Nigerians Good. creating that situation Good. where we cannot, where, as you say, we're in the reverse growth. growth we path. have the desert countries, Mali, Niger, uh, Burkina Faso. You only need to go and look at their investment in education. What I did, right, I, I took, um, the, 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 I took um, an average, right, of education investment over 37 years from 1981 when we stopped, when we started reducing our investment in human capital, right, and compared it with these countries. And it was the direct opposite. Nigeria invest less than 1%. In fact, over a period of 30, 36 year, uh, 37 years, right? Uh, sorry, over a period of 25 years from 1991, when we reduced education expenditure as a percentage of GDP to 0.7%, right? I took the same, I, I calculated all the countries of Africa. North Africa, I did it by region, North Africa, uh, West Africa, East Africa, Central Africa, and the southern part, all the countries on the southern parts of Africa, we, we invest the least as a percentage of GDP in education. And we have the highest, highest, and I mean the highest population. That means that the per capita investment on human development, we have the least. And if Africa as a whole, Africa as a whole, invest the least in human capital in the world, in human capital development in the world. If we now say Nigeria is investing the least, right, compared to Africa, that means that we have the least in the world. The, when, how did we get to this point? Because at a certain Somebody time... came in the mid-80s, I'll tell you, very direct. We, we were investing in human capital from the 60s, right? 70s and early 80s. Somebody came in the mid-80s and swapped the budget. We had a budget that was majorly capital expenditure all those years. In the mid-80s, somebody came and swapped the budget to majorly expense budget. So the investment in human capital stopped. Okay, so between that time when this individual came or individuals came and swapped the budget, till date, we've not had any group or any individual that's, that has thought it's time to return to what it used to be. We run an expense budget. I said this thing last week when I was here. Your, your investment pays your expense, not the other way around. You cannot run a 70% uh, 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 recurrent expenditure and 30% capital expenditure and expect to grow. 
It's not possible. The people of the country are the investments. They are your investment. Invest in them and they give you returns, right? Okay. So let's look at Nigeria as a whole because I see here that... See, you, I, 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 you know what? I'm going to cut you short eh, because I wanted Nigerians to actually partake in this, in this um, um, conversation. conversation, right? And I want to put it out there. This is what I'm going to ask Nigerians to do. What is your annual income? Please follow us on Twitter, right? What is your annual income? You and your husband. The total annual income of the household. Then what is... How many kids do you have? And then calculate how much you spend on education total in a year. Divide it by your annual income and times it by 100. It will give you the percentage, right, of how much of your annual income goes into education. That will prove whatever we're going to say today, right? Yes. Say wrong. that come again. You now, said that you uh, we have to calculate the um, say, total sums. For, for instance, your for school you, fees. Yes. For instance, your 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 household income, you and your wife. Let's just say it's about nine million, right? And then you you have three kids. Tell us how many kids you have, and what is the percentage of that annual income that goes into school fees? So if you your total household income is nine million, and your, your annual school fees for your three kids, right, uh, is four million. Divide four million by nine million and times it by 100. It will give you the percentage, the percentage of your annual income that goes into school fees. And then I'll be able to tell you why you cannot move out of poverty. We are eroding the middle class in Nigeria. 